Now moving on to the discussion of modules on fat soluble vitamins. You all know the fat soluble vitamins which are available are vitamin A, D, E and K. Now moving on to the clinical aspects of vitamin A deficiency. Remember mild features to begin with will affect the skin. Skin is a major area where mild deficiency of vitamin A manifest. What are the features in the skin? Very classically, it is a dry skin. Along with that, you will see thickening of the skin. What is the reason for thickening of the skin? It is due to hyperkeratotic plaques. Hyperkeratotic plaques. If you can recollect, I have just told some time back that vitamin A down regulates the keratin synthesis. So, when vitamin A deficiency occurs, there is upregulation of keratin synthesis, thereby causing hyperkeratic keratotic plaques resulting in thick skin. And in severe cases, the skin becomes so thick, it would be called as toad skin. Okay, so these are the features of vitamin A deficiency involving the skin area. Then we move on to the next important area. What is the obvious one in would be the eye changes in the form of xerophthalmia. Okay, you can very simply remember xerosis means dryness. Ophthalmia refers to the eye. So, it is a dry eye which is a basic category of disorders we are going to discuss further. Now, some important points about xerophthalmia. What would be the earliest symptom of xerophthalmia? I have told you vitamin A is very much needed for dark adaptation. So, defective dark adaptation will result in night blindness which is one of the earliest symptoms of xerophthalmia number one. Number two, what would be the earliest sign of xerophthalmia? It is drying of the conjunctiva, dry conjunctiva, what we call it as conjunctival xerosis. Conjunctival xerosis. This would be the earliest sign of xerophthalmia. Okay. Now, whenever there is dryness of the conjunctiva, there will also be wrinkles in the conjunctiva wrinkles in the conjunctiva and usual area where you will see wrinkles is palpebral conjunctiva. Palpebral conjunctiva. This would be very obvious whenever you ask the patient to move the eyes to one side. You will see that there are a lot of wrinkles present in the conjunctiva which can be easily made out. That is how we clinically say there is conjunctival xerosis. Now, Next is the most characteristic feature of xerophthalmia in the eyes. I think all of you can recognize this picture. What is this? It is nothing but the bitoid spots. These are the most characteristic finding of xerophthalmia. Most characteristics. Where can you see them first of all? You can see them in the palpebral conjunctiva which is very near to the junction of the cornea and the sclera. That is where you can see this bitoid spots. Now, this bitoid spot description typically glows like this. It is more like a triangular structure. Can you see that? It is more like a triangular structure which has got a foamy appearance and also it is appearing silvery white in color. So, silvery white foamy plaques on the palpebral conjunctiva is what we call bitoid spots and when we talk about the composition of the bitoid spot, it is composed of keratin. Okay, because I told you there is lot of keratinization occurring or there is lot of keratin accumulation. Along with that, you also have the debris accumulating in that area and sometimes during infection, bacterial accumulation can also occur. This is what actually contributes to the bitoid spots which is a characteristic feature of vitamin A deficiency. Next, moving on to other features of xerophthalmia. You can see uh, this picture is depicting the corneal scars corneal scars. Here you can even see an ulceration in the last picture and this picture depicts the thinning of the cornea what is called as keratomalacia. Keratomalacia or thin cornea. This is also called as corneal xerosis. These are the other different manifestations of xerophthalmia. There is a WHO staging for xerophthalmia which you should definitely be knowing about and these are very important questions for the exams as well. It divides it into two categories. One is called as a primary sign, another one is called as a secondary sign and denotes with X. X is for 
as you can imagine it is for xerophthalmia okay right so we will start with the first one in the primary sign as i told you the first sign is always congenital xerosis that's what is given x1a then x1b is for the characteristic sign what is that b for bited spots then we have x2 now involvement of the cornea so corneal xerosis x3 which is a severe involvement of the cornea characterized by corneal ulceration which is less than one third we call it x3a if corneal ulceration involves more than one third of the cornea it's called x3b sorry for this this is x3b if it is more than one third of the cornea affected and in these two categories we can also call them as keratomalacia it's a very simple name meaning malacia refers to thinning thin cornea is actually what is predisposing to ulceration of the cornea as well so these are the primary signs according to who staging secondary signs are generally the severe features of the disease which include xf for xerophthalmic fundus f for fundus and xs refers to scarring in the cornea s is for corneal scarring that's what you have to remember these are the who stagings related to xerophthalmia this is an important slide so many questions have been asked directly from this then we move on to management of vitamin a deficiency remember management is vitamin a only and the dose of vitamin a is dependent on the age of the child less than 6 month old child how much should be the dose it is 50000 international units if the child is 6 to 12 months it should be 1 lakh international units and if the child is more than 12 months it should be 2 lakhs international units however there is one more thing also you should make a note of in children with severe malnutrition the weight can be very less in that situation there is some modification based on the weight also what is that modification if the child is more than 1 year but the weight is less than 8 kg then how much should be the dose it is 1 lakh international units only so these are age based and weight based recommendations of vitamin a dosage and please remember the mode of treatment should be oral oral preparations are what are preferable in most case of vitamin a deficiency we have suspensions which contain 1 lakh units of vitamin a per ml there are also capsule form which again contain 1 lakh unit per capsule also okay so oral forms are the preferable mode of treatment for example you have a child with severe vomiting or a child is having severe malabsorption where vitamin a is not going to be utilized by the body then we can give parenteral dose okay parenteral preparations should be given not as same dose but equivalent dose so how much should be the parenteral dose it should be 50% of the oral dose 50% of the oral dose in a child more than 6 months of age and 75% of the oral dose in a child less than 6 months of age so these are the recommendations so parenteral dose is actually less than the oral dose whenever it is indicated now third important situation where you should remember is whenever there is a clouding of cornea who says that it is an emergency situation why because this child can very quickly develop blindness very important it can lead on to blindness and that too very quickly so that is why during clouding of cornea it is recommended that you give only parenteral vitamin a and how much of that vitamin a is recommended it is 50000 to 1 lakh international units of vitamin a is what is recommended if you are using for a case of corneal clouding now one more important situation would be in the form of keratomalacia in keratomalacia you will give the vitamin a as i have already said but in addition to protect the eyes you can do padding of the eyes padding of the eyes which is supposed to promote healing of the cornea as well along with that you can also instill topical antibiotic drops like for example three times a day you have to use this topical antibiotic drops these are all supportive management in addition to vitamin a treatment 